Hello Internet and welcome to my first shader graph tutorial. Today we're going to make an interactive grass shader that is purely based on some vector math that we will do inside the shader. First of all let's add a texture for the color and enable alpha clipping in the shader settings. You can do this with any type of shader graph but since I'm using 2019's HDRP I'll just go with the lit shader graph. But before we dive directly into adjusting our vertex position Let's make a sketch of what we want to do to each vertex of our mesh. First we want to get a directional vector from the player to the flower, which is the result of point B minus point A. And we also want to make sure that the player is within a certain range. Now we can push the flower away with the same directional vector we have just calculated, but we want to override its y-axis value to a negative one, so that the flower's vertex will always be moved towards the ground. And at last we have to make sure that we don't push the vertex below the ground. So let's create an exposed vector 3 that we can access inside our code. Therefore we want to name it properly. This will be our point A and we just drag it into our shader graph. After that we're going to need the vertex positions of our mesh, both in world space and in object space. So let's create a position node and duplicate it and just set it accordingly to world and object space. Next on we want to add a split node so that we can access each value of our vertex separately, the x, y and z value. And we want to add a combine node so that we can combine them all together. We can just drag the output of the combine node to our position master. After that we create an add node with the first input being our object space position. So when we don't add anything the vertex position is the normal one or the original one. But before we are going to add something, we want to multiply by the y-axis value of our object position so that our addition increases at the top but remains zero at the bottom just to keep the flower's root always at the same place and don't move the whole object around. To make sure that our vertex never get below the object, we create a clamp node and another split node. So we split the result of our addition and clamp the y-axis value between 0 and whatever before putting it all back together in the combine node. And now we're pretty much done with our restrictions and we can start thinking about the math. We start by getting a direction vector simply by subtracting the player position from the world space position of our vertex before we create another split and another combine node to override the y-axis value of our direction because the flower will always be pushed down and not up. Um, I just go with a minus one for now but we may have to expose that value later to tweak it if our objects get a little bit bigger. Now let's check for the distance between the player and the vertex. We also need to clamp this since the effect should only take place when the player is close enough. So to easily tweak this we create an exposed float value called range and use it as the maximum of our clamping. Now we have a smooth transition from 1 to 0 within our range but we actually need a transition from 0 to 1. So to get this we flip the values by subtracting them from our maximum range. You can see what I mean by playing around with the player position's default value. Now by multiplying this with our direction vector we are done with a function and only need to feed it in our strain chain and the shader is done. Now in my case I don't want to add a new material to all of these hundreds of grass meshes so I will just use the existing material and just exchange the shader. And last but not least we have to write a few lines of code to feed our player's position into the material shader. And first we need a public array of materials and a public transform for the player and a vector 3 to store the player's position. Instead of the update I like to use uh, coroutines that return null. They also get executed every frame but if they crash they crash and we don't have to wait for it. And to continuously execute it we start with a while loop that is always true. Um, now we want to uh, get the player position and store it in our vector so that we can now iterate within a for loop through all of our materials 
and just giving them the same vector and sending it to the material. Don't forget, since we're using a coroutine, we have to start it, so let's start the coroutine. Now we can add our script to any object in the scene, in this case I'm using my player and just fill out the public variables. So we need our player and a material. Now it's finally time to test our interactive grass system. And as you can see it works pretty fine, we can even change the distance at which the grass is affected. But I think I want to add another value to the shader, one that defines how fast the vertex is pushed down to the floor. So we just create another exposed value that will replace the minus one override of our directional vector. This value is basically our animation speed, which is important when you have some very high grass or some very low grass. You want to fine tune the animation speed so that it fits the height of your mesh. But of course it's not only the player that can interact with the grass, there may also be enemies, other players. So. Maybe you want more than just one entity to interact with the grass. And yeah, let's just add that for a second one. Well, this is the downside of this method because you will have to prepare for every entity that you want to interact with because um, yeah, you need to prepare it in every shader. It's pretty simple, straightforward. We just duplicate our vector, our directional vector and just add it to our uh, restraint chain and give it a second input of our second player or second entity that can interact but yeah like I said you will have to do this for every entity that you want to be able to interact with your grass and so you have to plan up front for example how many enemies you have in this scene. Um, luckily there's no real limit I think to um, these kind of values and nodes so you should be fine with even 50 entities, although then the shader might get a little bit uh, heavy on the GPU. But of course we also need to adjust our program, which also is quite simple. We just need another transform and another vector 3 and uh, yeah, just basically do the same lines. Although when you go even higher than just two, when you like have 10 entities, I would suggest using more arrays. So that's your preferred method and as you can see both of our players are interacting with the grass. Uh, let's just do a little bit of radiant change so yeah now we can see it much better that both of them are pushing the grass away and yeah that's pretty much it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said I think this is the most performance performance solution for interactive grass compared to all the other solutions that I've found so far. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this. If yes, so, please uh, like this video, leave me a comment uh, how effective this will be in your game or what kind of method you're using. And uh, I hope I see you next time for some new tutorials and uh, have a nice day.